Okay, before I start today's setup guide for a launch box in Super Nintendo setup, if you like what you see, stay hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation setup guides like this one today. Helps my channel out a lot, plus you get notified each time I release a setup guide. So today we're looking at the very awesome 16-bit console, which is Super Nintendo competing against Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. Anyways, let's get into this. So first of all, we're obviously going to need the latest version of the launch box, which is free. And of course, you can actually pay extra for the big box premium edition, which I personally use myself and is highly recommended. So first of all, we're going to need some games for this. So in my games folder just here, I've got Alien 3, Bubsy in Donkey Kong Country. Very good games. So let's actually get into this launch box. Okay, once we're inside the launch box, I'm going to just shut this window down. So next, I'm going to go at the tools, and from here, I'm just going to go down to import, and I'm going to go to ROM files. And welcome to the import ROMs from Files Wizard. So just next on this part. Next thing we need to do is tell Launchbox where to locate the games. So we're going to go to add folder. And of course, my games are on my desktop in my games folder. So I'm going to need to go to desktop just here. And if I just go to my games folder where my games are located, I'm going to just left click on that and then go to select folder. I'm going to press next. And what platform are you importing games for? So you can either drop this down or just type in Super Nintendo and up pop Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm going to go to next and I'm going to press on automatically install and configure RetroArch. Next part of this is gonna ask you if you want your games located to another place on your computer. If you wanna keep them where they currently are, just select the bottom option here, use the files in their current location. Just left click on this one. And just make sure that search for game information in the local meta database is checked. And we're gonna to go to next. Now, next up, what I was saying just a minute ago about highly recommending premium big box edition of Launchbox is that if you've really got this, then you ideally want to select all of the artwork just here or images as it says. So I'm going to go with check all. And if you don't have much hard drive space, just be very minimal about this because by selecting each one of these, it's really going to eat up chunks of hard drive space. So for me and this setup guide, I'm just going to select everything. I'm going to go to next. Now the next part of this is configure emu movies. Now if you are using premium big box edition of Launchbox, I totally recommend sign up with emu movies. It doesn't cost too much, literally a few dollars and you get preview videos, that type of thing. If you're using the free version of Launchbox, then there's no point in doing this. So I'm going to go to next. Next part we got is download bezels from the bezel project and what this is going to do is give us some artwork on the sides rather than having black spaces. So if you want to do this, just check download bezels and what do you want to download? I'm going to go with system bezels for this and go to next. And as we can see, it's now ready to import my Super Nintendo games into Launchbox. So if I then go to finish. What this is actually doing now is connecting to the Launchbox database and it's getting some metadata from us. In other words, it's grabbing us some information. So when it finally imports our games, we'll see bits and pieces of information such as release date and a bit of storyline towards each game. We're now downloading and installing RetroWatch to power these games as we requested it to do so when we we're setting it up. What I'm going to do is just show you where Launchbox is actually located. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you to my C drive. Now, if you installed Launchbox just by default settings, it doesn't create a shortcut. So the easiest way to do this is actually go into your C drive and you'll find a users folder just here. Inside of here, you're going to find the name of your computer's folder, which in my case is Jamie. And from here, you'll then see your Launchbox folder. And inside of your Launchbox folder, you can also find an emulators folder. And this is where RetroArch would have installed to. And you can actually open up RetroArch, just as regular RetroArch from this folder by just going down and open up through here. But we can actually, of course, open this up through Launchbox when we launch our Super Nintendo games. 
So let's go back to Launchbox and here's the games. It's just download and bezel pack, which of course is going to give us that art on the sides of the screen for four by three aspect ratios rather than having those black bars. And if we also look on the left side here under consoles, which has just appeared, we've now got Super Nintendo up here. And I'm always going to say this, but if you are using the free version of Launchbox, which is the version I'm using for this setup guide, you can actually change how the images look. If you go to image group, 3D boxes, you will then get a range of different artwork, providing you downloaded it during the initial setup for this. So we've also got carts here. Uh, so we got the American, North American cartridges here, rather than the uh, PAL region. And we can go down to clear logos. But anyways, I'm going to leave this on to say backgrounds for now, and that's fine. So let's actually launch a game using Launchbox. I can either left click on one of these games and go to play, or I can right click on it, play, or if I go to launch with RetroArch, as we can see here, when we set up Launchbox, it downloaded RetroArch and it also identified which core to use. And this is SNES 9X, which is a very good core. And SNES 9X, I did a very long time ago on my channel. It's a standalone emulator, so very much recommended for Super Nintendo games. So let's actually play this. And I'm using a Google Stadia controller. I've not had to configure it. So this is of course Bubsy, one of my childhood favourite games. This game, it gets a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't like this game. I personally like it, that's nostalgia probably. But anyways, what we can do with this game is therefore apply the bezels or overlays as RetroWatch calls it. So to do this, I'm going to enter the quick menu, which you can see right now. And I'm just pressing my Google Stadia button to get to this menu. If you're using an Xbox controller, it'll be your Xbox button. And PlayStation controllers will be your PS button to access this menu. If we just scroll down, I'm using D-pad. We're going to find on-screen overlay. If I go into this by pressing A, display overlay, I'm going to enable this by pressing A. And right here on Overlay Preset, you're going to find Bubsy, or whichever game it is you're going to be using for this. If I press B to come out, and go back into the game by pressing A on Quick Menu and Resume. So as you can see, we've now got those overlays applied and it looks pretty good. It's not as bad as having those black bars, but that's entirely down to preference. We can do more things from the quick menu too. If we just scroll down again and go to core options, from here we can actually change the aspect ratio. It's currently on 4x3. We can actually put this down to say PAL. And if I go back into the game, quick menu, resume. As you can see, it's slightly stretched now, so some of the image is actually missing. So, of course, this is an NTSC version of the game. If I go back down to Core Options and Preferred Aspect Ratio, if I put this to NTSC, Quick Menu, Resume. So, of course, in NTSC regions of the world, the games generally look different. Sizes are different and even the speeds of the game are different. Sadly, for PAL users, games are actually slower. But anyways, what we're going to do next is actually take a look at aesthetics in the game. So if we go to main menu, drop down to settings, and go down to video, scaling, 
what we're going to do next is apply our linear filtering and as it says this is going to add a slight blur if i enable this so it's on if i go back into the game quit menu resume And as you can see, it's got a slight blur to that right now. Next thing we can do actually through RetroArch is actually apply cheats. So to do this, we're going to need to obviously access the quick menu. And from here, I'm going to just go down to online updater. Now, I've got a lot of people in the past that say they don't see particular settings within RetroArch. And the reason that might be is because RetroArch is available in several systems. So if you've got RetroArch or something like an Android phone, then it's going to be suited for Android phones. This is, of course, Windows, so I've got all the options available here. But anyways, under Online Updater, if I go down to Update Cheats, we can actually apply cheats to Super Nintendo games. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to go down to Update Slang Shaders. Okay, so whilst it's extracting cheats, which can take a little while, what I'm going to do is press B to come out of here. And if I come out, go to settings. And if I just go back to video just here, and if I go inside a video, right at the bottom, you're going to find video filter. Just here, we can actually apply filters to the game. If you're not sure what a filter is, you're about to see. So I'm going to use scan line for this. If I press A, and come back out by pressing B, Main menu, quick menu, resume. And if you can see that, it's actually now applied a scan line by selecting that option under video, which was video filter. If we go back into there, there's lots of really mad filters we can use, such as dot matrix. If I put some like dot matrix three times dark grid on, and let's go back into the game again. So next up, and finally, I'm gonna just show you how to apply those cheats. So we just went to online updater and we downloaded the cheats just here. So in quick menu to apply cheats, if we just scroll down, you're gonna find cheats just here. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply after toggle. So I'm going to turn this on by pressing A. And if I just drop down two to loads cheat file or pens and go into there, you're going to find a lot of folders. And we're look, going to look for Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And here it is, Nintendo Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So what RetroArch has done is downloaded lots of cheat files, pretty much for the entirety of the Super Nintendo catalog. So obviously I now need to locate Bubsy. Okay, so we've actually got several for Bubsy. So the one I'm gonna apply for this is gonna be the first one, USA. Obviously I'm using an NTSC copy here. So if I press A on that, if I come out of there and just drop down, we're now gonna see lots of cheats. For example, we got life's cheats, we got number t-shirts, infinite lives. If I apply this one by pressing A, and then go down to enable, press A. If I press B to come out, we can then use a cheat, start with one life, start with five lives. So there's lots of things here to use under cheats. Uh, we got random cheats such as bogus jump, whatever that is. If I press A on that, and of course enable it again by pressing A to turn it on. Super jump, it enabled, turn it on. So what I need to do next to actually apply these cheats is go to apply changes. And if I press A on this, and if I go to auto apply cheats during game loads, enable this. And if I go back to quick menu and down to restart.
And as you can see, the game is now restarted from chapter six. Very awesome stuff. So let me just remind you that all cheats for your Super Nintendo games are all going to vary. So if you're playing something like Super Mario World, then not necessarily will you see the same cheats like this one I've used. So anyways, once you're done setting all your video settings in RetroArch, you need to save everything as well. So if we go back to quick menu and to core options, manage core options, we got two options here to save. We've got sync game options, which is going to apply for this particular game, or we can actually save the same video settings and everything else to all of the games which are going to be using this SNES 9X core. That's it for today's launch box and Super Nintendo setup guide. So I covered quite a lot in there. Reason being is because you can do a lot with RetroArch. It's a lot more than just open up your game. As we've seen in this video, we can apply cheats, video settings, overlays. So lots to look at inside of there. But anyways, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Helps my channel a lot, plus you get notified each time I release a video. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.